Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, History Apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from TechEdge and today we're talking about history apps and website and really the audience today is more for secondary classrooms, middle school and up. Lots of opportunities for younger kids but today we want to focus on what happens in those classrooms from about sixth grade and up. The first one I want to talk about is a fantastic website we're going to dig deeper into it in another episode but Teaching Big History. The Big History Project is a fantastic uh, website and you can see Teaching Big History has a lot of resources for teachers but it has set lesson plans for students set as well so if you go through this this is getting to know so there are guides for teachers to walk you through what is Big History what is available on the website and then thinking about how you can use it effectively in your classroom so these are really ways to look at history from the big expanses of how history has unfolded and then being able to look deeper and deeper into specific cases within those longer, uh, larger timelines as uh, we can explore them. So if we go into the units, you can see that it actually starts with the history of the universe and then goes beyond that. I'll log into uh, agriculture and civilization because this is the start of a really meaningful prehistory from that perspective and you can see that we've got readers we've got a unit guide and we've got unit slides so there's a series of materials that would help and you can see from the quality here there are fantastic materials there are fantastic photographs maps uh, videos etc this for example is why was agriculture so important so you get a short video that explains the key ideas and you see how the whole thing focuses on how do we zoom in on a specific period, talking to different uh, historians, learning to think like a historian, so you can actually build up as you learn the specific features within these units. This is a fantastic way to get kids engaged and to really foster their interest and their ability to understand the larger themes and then the value of details or regional uh, source materials and all of that, including writing in their own notebooks. So you can see that there are articles, there are videos, there are activities, infographics, etc. And I'll just give you an example of one of the articles. One of the things that I like best about these articles, uh, besides the fact that they have been actually uh, collected for your uh, use is the fact that each one of them also has a reading level attached so you know if it's appropriate for your students or not. In this case uh, they use a uh, it's on the bottom left so you know is this something that's appropriate for my students or not and then you can collect uh, you can continue from there all of these are very well written and it moves us away from the traditional textbooks where all of the material is supposed to be in the book into this interactive website where you can get a lot of materials and you can go deeper or just uh, skip into another topic within uh, the unit which is an interesting and innovative way to think about how we do curriculum in uh, the social sciences in general. So this is Big History and uh, bighistoryproject.com and I promise that we will uh, go back and explore this in depth with the social studies teachers who's using this in her classroom or his classroom uh, relatively soon. So this is a resource if you are interested in resources for the classroom this is this is a fantastic one. Uh, the second one is a series of videos from Crash Course. Crash Course is a fantastic set of videos. They're good as introduction or as a summary depending on how you want to use them. They're short videos that focus on specific issues within history. There's world history, there's also American history. Uh, there are other topics as well but we want to focus on a Crash Course. I think that's probably one of the best productions personally thinking, but others like their astronomy and others 
uh, as well. It's available very easily on uh, through PBS and on uh, YouTube. I love uh, using it actually from my uh, iPad. So if I switch right now to my iPad, I'll be able to show you how that plays out. It immediately populates the World History uh, Crash Course uh, with all of its videos and you can see that it covers very thoroughly all of the issues, but they're all fairly short videos, uh, seven to 12 minutes. Uh, for the most part, they're very fast paced. So kids need to know something about it. They can serve as all of the learning, but they're definitely good as refreshers. They're definitely good as intros. I've seen people use them both ways. Uh, another set of videos comes from Khan Academy. Khan Academy takes a very different tack on this. This is slower, more designed, uh, um, videos that are aimed at highlighting the key features and talking about the key uh, things in the way that Khan has done his math ones as well. So he's doing this less as a historian and more as a content oriented, um, less even issue oriented, but a lot of the detail is there. It's a pleasing graphically and it's really an interesting way to do it very, very differently. So if you're not comfortable with something like Crash Course, it's fast paced and all of the details details and, and the big picture there, this will provide a very different approach to uh, studying history through videos. But I do recommend at least uh, trying it as a way to explore. Um, one more um, one more resource that I've talked about before and I think is important to, uh, to think about is called History Atlas. And History Atlas, much like a big history, Dot com. What you can see on the screen is that ability to look at different time points and anywhere in the world. So you've got this uh, world atlas that rotates and you can examine what happens at the same time in different places. You can see who's most prominent on that bottom area and then you can move through the times and see what's happening at any given uh, time. Now we're looking at China, so we're seeing the Tang Dynasty, and you can just change this and you can see the different dynasties emerging and uh, disappearing in China across time. You can do the same thing in any other area of the world. So if we take the Roman world and we go to the emergence of Rome, you can see how cities are evolving in Italy and we can actually zoom in. So you can zoom in. And you can see that the level of detail is such that it really allows you to explore the bigger uh, movements and not so much the smaller uh, details. And you get these little bubbles that give you some information about what's happening at that period in that uh, area, this, in this case the Papal States around uh, 1000 uh, AD. So this is a way to explore again large movements in history and have more of an understanding of how it all interacts and not just the focus on a specific era and specific details. And the details are important and they're important to explore, but this allows you also to get the big pictures. So today we talked about some websites and some apps that help you explore history and I'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom.